Locals say it is as hard to do business now in South Sudan as it was before independence. Emmanuel Obulejo owns a garage, but he has few customers. Uh, business is like now, so as soon as they get him down, we just push, otherwise we feel like closing. Because we need to pay rent, we need to pay losses now, you know, profit. Martin Younger John is a taxi driver. His car broke down, but he can't afford the spare parts. Now he is jobless. Sometimes you transport people. When they reach their final destination, they don't pay. They don't have money. Now I can't work. I don't have money to repair this car. South Sudan's government has turned to its neighbors for help. In our economic situation, we will be helped by the region also because the issue of commodities, uh, whether you call it onga or diesel, petrol, all of this that we need so that we can move on as people, the region will also help in, uh, in providing those uh, items. Locals are hoping Kenya, Uganda and Sudan will consider the government's request favorably so that as efforts are underway to resolve the political disputes simultaneously, business environment can also improve in South Sudan. Patrick Oyet, CCTV, Juba, South Sudan. In June this year, Africa's youngest nation cancelled its independent celebrations. A two-year civil war had ravaged the country. With inflation at close to 300 percent, the government was broke. By mid-July, following clashes between forces loyal to President Salva Kiir and his rival Rick Mashar, things had gone from bad to worse. Food scarcity, a lack of basic goods and fuel shortages. Last week, President Salva Kiir sent a delegation to Nairobi for an emergency meeting with Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta to ask for a bailout. Given the current, current crisis, the oil prices internationally, uh, the little that we are uh, producing is not in earning, earning us uh, much money, so we have been facing uh, difficulties in delivering basic service to the people. The latest figures from South Sudan's National Bureau of Statistics indicate an increase in inflation by 405% over the past two months, peaking at 661.3% in July. This is mainly due to a shortage of food after the evacuation of Kenyan and Ugandan traders. President Kenyatta has reportedly instructed South Sudan to come up with a clear proposal. They're on the floor. Without the bailout, at least one financial analyst says it's unlikely the economy will recover. There are $4 billion in debt by most estimates. Uh, their income is, is, is wiped out when you consider that they've got to share some of that oil income with oil co companies, they've got to pay that tariff. So you've got, a, you're lending money into a situation which is already minus $4 billion. And then you've got to say to yourself, where does this economy recover? South Sudan is already struggling to access loans. And if Kenya does agree to the bailout, it will likely attach conditions to safeguard taxpayers' money and try to instill some discipline in Juba's physical management. It requires really deep reforms. It requires the, you know, the economy to diversify, the government to apply uh, tax collection to wide swathes of the economy they're not doing now. As yet, neither Kenya nor South Sudan has put a figure on the bailout. That figure likely to be determined later this week when the two sides meet. However, it is thought that the loan will be along the same lines as the economic bailout of Zimbabwe by South Africa a while back. Robert Magela, CCTV, Nairobi, Kenya.